That's no more. That's an asshole. It wasn't a phase. Chapter for the podcast with Mouse and I. Howdy. Yay! <laughs> Happy to be here. How are you guys doing today? Sure. Mm-hmm. How was the drive? Just, all right. Really? Where do you guys, where is your fan base out? Yeah, currently West Palm Beach. So, oh. yeah. Okay. To get here is a little bit, but we're happy to Horses. be here. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. worth it. <laughs> I'm glad you guys could come out. Uh, that is a bit of a drive. So, thank you for taking the time to come out. Um, I want to start a little bit. Well, I always start asking you guys how you kind of got together, where the band come from. Mm. So, I had I had met Alex. Um, we were kind of hanging out and talking about music, um, putting ideas together, and then he mentioned that he had a had a friend, and our our buddy um, Noah got really hungry, and happened to go to a burger joint by where we were hanging out. Ran into Lewis and um, swapped some ideas with him, and we were all kind of like on a similar page, and uh, started there. Um, Matt was roommates with Lewis at the time too, and he would come join us for jams, and eventually joined, and it was like gun ho from there. Once they earned my confidence, yeah, yeah, yeah we, we might have to work for it for sure. We, we might what not have had. had. I'm sorry. What was the word? Confidence. confidence. Once confidence. they confidence. earned, yeah, yeah, they had to earn my confidence, okay. and then you know, then I officially joined. Right. We might not have had him join the band if there wasn't a noise complaint. Because yeah. we, we had um, <laughs> we had this like system back when I lived in my apartment um, where like we were running all our instruments out into like a direct in on an interface and using headphones. And it was just me, him and him. And um, so then one day, apparently the clicking on the electric drums was too loud for one of my neighbors and so they didn't knock on the door they just called the police so they show up and they're like ah dang so we had to move all our instruments over to his his house and luckily we had a bassist in the residence the house House bassist the house bassist bassist. 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 bassists are hard to come by true Um, a rare commodity i can't imagine calling like a noise complaint over like the electric drum set. Right? Like, yeah, like, it was crazy. No it's not singing. like I was playing like, the air. No, it must have some trauma from like rock band or something. Like, yeah. Because like, <laughs> like, yeah. it was just. Yeah. No, yeah. My, my brother had one of those and it was like. It was great. He I mean, hits hard though. Yeah. He hits super hard. So I mean, I mean, maybe it's not great at like two in the morning though. You know. Yeah, those are hours. <laughs> it was eleven. <laughs> it was eleven. You think so? <laughs> okay. I feel like it was late. Not that late, dude. It was eleven. <laughs> So well, here we are. Can't confirm or deny the time. But. <laughs> no, yeah, there's no, there's no uh, timestamps on this. Sure, but. sure. <laughs> no, that's awesome, you guys. Um, that's really cool. So in the podcast, we love to focus on what it was like for you growing up in the scene. If you were involved in the local music scene, do you identify as an elder emo? So we can go one by one on what your experience has been with music and how you've grown up with it. We'll start with Nico. Um, mm, most, most of my friends, I'd say, are like elder emos. But not myself. Um, music was around, uh, but I was always too shy to like go out and uh, catch live music when I was a bit younger. So it was more of a solo thing. Um, I'd, I'd find bands like online and just kind of develop my taste from there. And um, being, I was put into music classes when I was like younger. And then in high school, I, I really developed into it. And that's when I started branching out into the different music scenes, school-wise and outside of it, and getting more more used to it. And now it's just like all the time. Right. I'm constantly surrounded in it. What kind of bands were you into? Like what were When I was when I was young, young, I liked um, like eighties like dance block stuff, like Michael Jackson and Prince. And then eighties bands and then eventually, like sixties hippie stuff, and um, from there it kind of went all over the place. So like jazz and country and folk and blues and all of that, like mixed together into what became my sound and my taste. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's, that's kind of my, right. my stuff. 
Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah Michael Jackson. <laughs> I love Michael Jackson. Uh, yeah, Michael, um, killer tunes. Yeah, not not much of a scene kid. Definitely a lot of music growing up though. Um, my father and mom though, they would um, they would do shows at like local bars and stuff. When I was a toddler, I would go with them. So I kind of grew up around it. But that was before. It wasn't really my choice at that point. I was kind of just there. Um, but I enjoyed it and I got comfortable in that um, in that environment. I would say. Um, and then yeah, music lessons, um, family of musicians. So it was kind of very natural to be like 16, 17, 18, like, damn, I kind of want to start a band, you know, right. like the classic. Um, and yeah, I mean, it just flowed naturally from there. And then here we are. <laughs> as well, you said as a toddler, but like, as you were kind of growing up, I'm assuming you were still insane, mm -hmm. you know, going to yeah. local shows. Did you ever build any sort of resentment before you like embraced it? Not really. I, there was a point where, um, there were certain things I developed resentment for, like being forced to take piano lessons. That was when I was a little older, maybe around 12 or 13 or so. Um, I think that might be more of uh, evidence of like an authority problem in general rather than anything against music. Just like being told to do stuff makes me want to do it less. Punk, uh, punk Matt. Yeah, punk, yeah, my inner punk coming out. But uh, you know, you, you told them to come to the interview and you kidnapped him on the way here. Yeah, yeah, yeah essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah they well, dragged me. Yeah. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I mean, you know, looking back, uh, obviously, I have. I'm glad that I spent as much time putting into music as I did at a young age because I think it helped me to develop that like part of my brain, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of um, foster that inner creative desire that I had. So yeah, it all worked out. <laughs> it, it did. Oh yeah. Louis. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, just like normal pop hits or whatever, like. Top 40 radio? Top 40 radio for a long time, growing up. And then, yeah, like, going, like, that transition from middle school to high school, just I played Guitar Hero, found out about rock music, like, really found out about rock music. And I just got obsessed with, like, you know, the classic grunge heroes, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, um, what's it called? Pearl Jam, you know. So then, like, I got into uh, alternative 90s, like, pretty deep. So I liked a lot of that. Um, my favorite band is Primus, so you know they're wonky and weird and shape me like into how I am as a drummer and literally anything else. He's also ashamed of that sometimes. I don't understand. I am because they suck. Primus sucks. <laughs> yeah, Primus sucks. Primus sucks. But I'm here for the self awareness. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be, because I mean, like I don't know. Uh, anyway, but yeah, yeah, I got super into that. Um, that like pushed me through all of like high school. Got into. Um, Got into a uh, bass guitar because all of my friends and stuff, like a lot of my friends were uh, musicians and they like loved their instruments and it was like very inspiring. So it's like, I was like, let me get a try. I got into bass guitar, messed around a little bit, got into guitar. And then um, I kind of want to start doing uh, music by myself, like make a solo project kind of thing or just try it. And so then I ended up buying a, a drum kit and like, wow, that just changed everything. It was like, I got on and I was like, this is my instrument. This is what I want to do. It's like the best way to express myself. Right. And so, um, yeah, I formed a band with Matt like early in our, you know, musician, music journey. And like, he's been like the only bass player I've ever known, except there was Eddie from Voodoo Monk, shout out. But okay. um, no, he, yeah, he's a close friend and we had a little thing going, but. No, the, yeah. The fretless bass, I remember. Yep. The entire time, I'm like, what do you mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that is a, he, that is a neat bass he has. But, he's a killer, man. He's a, he's a killer. killer, yeah. But, um, no, yeah, like, from there, like, me and Matt just learned our instruments together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we had, like, our own little projects going on for a while. And, um, you know, things happen, like, bands break up or whatever. And so we, like, straight away, whatever. But um, we formed this new project. He hopped on. I convinced him. You know, we convinced him. And... Uh, yeah, no looking back so far. We're killing it. <laughs> so you were self-taught? Yeah, self-taught. Okay. Or actually, no. Um, I was for, for a long period of time, like during that, but uh, I did have a, um, a teacher, Patrick Johansson. He's been, um, he's like Yngwie Malmsteen's longtime drummer and he's a really close mentor and like friend of mine. He's just like, he's amazing. And he, he, he taught me a lot, but um, yeah, after that, like, 
just through the bands and experience the local scene like everyone's super supportive they help you um show you different like tips tricks and you know like then you do your own thing express it it's cool <laughs> no it's awesome and correct i mean i ask i love when people are self-taught because for me like music is something that's very difficult i don't play anything i mm. played the viola for a little bit in high school because you know they threw me in orchestra against my own will um and that's why the fretless bass thing also gets me because mm. i had to, there was tape all over that viola like i had oh, patience for every yeah. finger <laughs> But no, that's super cool. I'm glad you found your calling with the drums. Oh. Um, Alex. You know how it is. I am like... Uh, Did a little birdie come and tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. You know, piano lessons at five, stopped taking piano lessons. And, you know, I wasn't really that involved with music until like you know, elementary, like late elementary school where I guess I, because my mom got me an iPod and I was like, okay, I'll find something. Um, and I got into this band, I'm sure you, yeah, One Republic. It was weird. <laughs> and then it kind of advanced a little bit. I was in like of Monsters and Men. I, I hadn't like discovered like a whole lot of stuff. Um, and then I got to high school and in my freshman year, I met this chick. And she showed me these songs that I thought were really cool, but like, notice they, they were a little like underground. I've never like heard, I've never heard of these. Nobody's ever heard of these, like Andrew Jackson, Jihad, or like, well, the, the Antlers kind of blew up a little after this. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. And around that same time, I was going to church at like youth group or whatnot. And my, um, like one of the youth leaders was like, I have this ukulele. You want it? And I'm like, okay. You the know. ukulele? Yeah. So you played Never Shot Never Covers, right? Yeah? No. Who's that? <laughs> I'm still looking for a podcast guest that knows who Never Shot Never is. Thank you. Next. Never Shot <laughs> Never. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm somewhat <laughs> kidding. I know they're like an emo band. I'm not like. It was It was very hippie-ish. Christopher Drew Engel. Um, a lot of the songs were like with ukulele. Hmm. It was a phase. No, it wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't. Anyways, there, continue. There wasn't you, you were given a ukulele, fans. and then you deeply upset me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I okay. So, anyways, I started learning these songs that like this that this girl showed me, and I was advancing on like my involvement with that kind of like genre that she was showing me, like it was, like underground indie stuff before like it, indie became like a sound. So. Um, you know, I started playing a little bit. And my dad, he was like, you know what? I, let, let's get you like a mic or something. And like he had this old like interface and we would use that to he showed me like, oh, here's how you record. We'd use Audacity. And he made these like stupid little like like jingles or he'd just go Ooh, and do like, oh, that's cool. So then I got invested in like the recording, like probably about as soon as I started kind of learning how to play. And um, and so that that progressed over time. I had like a couple of bands, and and they weren't like anything special. You know, there wasn't that much dedication between any of us. We did open mics and stuff like, and I'd been in a band with him like three times before, <laughs> and that Eddie guy That's from the charm. right, <laughs> and then the and and the the Eddie guy and. It, Eddie St. Andrew from Voodoo Monk, shout out. And so, you know, that went on and got through college. We, yeah, we stopped like jamming together. And then I met a friend who was like, okay, he wanted us to play like a punk band thing. And I was like, into that, you know, cause I, I was into punk, like Jeff Rosenstock and a lot of these like nineties pop punk kind of like bands um, around the time, like modern baseball, not really 90s, but... Um, <laughs> but we're still waiting for them to get back together. Right. I, I know, it still hurts. And then, like, a couple of years ago, my father died, and, I was, and he was, like, he was, like, trying to start up a business. And, like, he, he'd been working for this company for, like, a long time. This, uh, he was an engineer, and he wasn't happy with it. He, and so when... He, he started trying to like manufacture like little like inventions that he wanted to do, like become like a inventor for people, like contracted out. 
and he was happy. He was uh, he was so happy. And then you know, like that was only within like a year before he died. And so I was like, man, I should probably actually like take what I want to do seriously. And so I was gonna go back to that pop punk band kind of thing. And while I was having that discussion with him, I, I decided like uh, he was like, you know, like. I'm looking for a keyboardist. I'm like, well, I wanted to be a keyboardist for a while. And so I'm like, okay. And then I just kind of went off with him. <laughs> and then we, we started playing some of his songs and whatnot. It was, it was, a, it was a good time. It's awesome. Still and is a good time. Still is a good time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this is like a breakup session here. <laughs> <laughs> so the people want to know, because every time my boyfriend actually points this out, um, every time we see your name, we're like, not Cyanide, like the hospital. Where did Mount Sinai come from? <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, it stems more, I'd say, from the geographical location. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of weight behind the name. Um, we had a big list of names because it was really hard to, to come up with, with the band name at the time. Yeah, we, we had songs and stuff, and things were moving much quicker than we had anticipated. We were like, ah, oh, we need a name. And then we we came up with a funny name like there was like a couple that were just like ridiculous uh -oh. like uh -oh. <laughs> like the shifters or Ozinga or some some crazy names like Mercury that. Valley yeah Mercury Valley was another Mercury one. what Valley Valley yeah I like that actually he still to cool. this day says that we need to call our band Beef Lobster I know yeah so it was it was said as, as <laughs> you Beef Lobster hungry, were you? yeah usually <laughs> usually the best ideas come surf and like, turf baby surfing. I get angry so I don't know how you got it. I get hangry and creative. It's a, it's a horrible <laughs> combo. And um, so we, we were trying to find a name that, that fit the sound and what we were going for. And um, that kind of came up. I was, uh, was brought up in Christian schools and there was a lot of weight behind that name. I mean, it's a mountain, it's a big sound. And it's where um, Moses uh, entered into the presence of God. And when when we play together, it's it's like something something special happens and we're like touching into things that are greater than ourselves and we kind of discussed it and it seemed to, to fit it had a the weight of history behind it we um we also when we play out a lot a lot of people tell us we sound like like this band or that band too and so there's more like historical weight and inertia behind it and and it it seemed to fit and we we knew about the hospital as well and music music heals us and so we want to do that for for the people as well and, and we stuck with that name and it really really worked with us i think mm -hmm. yeah so. i didn't expect that kind of answer that's a really beautiful mm -hmm. uh, context to the band name and i'm really glad you know we have this platform to, to put it out there thank you no yeah. so, and so i want to know a little bit about the songwriting process that you guys go through too like who is it all over the place? Um, is it like definitely all over the place? I would okay. say it mainly starts with um, a part or a collection of parts from Nico or Alex, um, and then we kind of in, they'll introduce them to the rest of us. We'll all put our two cents in. It'll kind of transform a bit, um, and then you know whatever parts that's missed, say like oh it, we think it still needs like some type of bridge here or something there or like. It needs to have like a more clear direction or something um, then kind of the other people who weren't involved in bringing the original parts will often like finish the other half of it if you will okay. so it ends up being very collaborative i would say like between like um, me and nico we're good at kind of like like the grand like blueprint but mm -hmm. but um, matt comes in and he always like makes it like more intricate and like like little crevices of each part of the song. Like, like you just, more like layers. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a euphemism for complicating. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sure. kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you can take one idea and then like pull out different aspects of it and like give you the most basic form of it and then show you like a more interesting side of it. And then you end up getting a lot more. Cause like the ideas that they come up with are always so rich for like layering. It's like, there's so much you could do with just one uh, chord progression or just one riff that it, there's a lot there's a lot yeah, yeah a lot of a lot of play a lot of fun and um 
what we used to do in the beginning too is we have like a, an unspoken fifth member that we would run everything by and make sure it was it was okay with them. <laughs> and then once we kind of finished that, yeah, we put the song song through and then test it live and see how it would. How okay. It would Who was the unspoken fifth member? Oh, we, we don't we can't talk about that. You yeah, can't disclose it. Is there bad blood or is it just no, no, like? No, no, no. We, we love this person. Thou yeah, shall not just, be named. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's a secret. So, Alex, you play the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So, I just went to Fest uh, last weekend mm -hmm. and um, super cool. A guy had a key guitar. Like, they were doing a Huey, Huey Lewis and the News really? cover oh set. Wow. Yeah, the cover sets at Fest were like insane. And it was great. Key guitar, like, all the way up there. We got a saxophone on the other side. It's a great experience. If you can ever go to Fest, I'm here promoting Fest. Guys. I know there is a. <laughs> Yeah, there's a couple of people on the lineup I wanted to see, but couldn't make it. But. See, I'd like to play a key, a key but like I've also got this other thing around my neck all the time. He's so. just has four instruments. He's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, four I, instruments? I, I have a book. No, I'm not, not really. I have like a noise maker. I have a noise maker, so it's technically every. Okay. So like, it's it's just a theremin, and I don't know. I can't use it to make like a real like <laughs> note out of it. I just use it to go. Wee, 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 wee. And then, still an like I play like the eagle wheel, which is like a wind instrument that I use it for like a trumpet, but it's digital, so it comes out like that. And then I play keys and I sing. So. A digital trumpet? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. What? Electric wind instrument. Eagle. Eagle. It, it looks like this, like a. Uh, People call it a clarinet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, then it's like the little touchscreen thing, and then you you hit the bot. No, it's it, 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 it's, it's kind of like that. It doesn't really have a touchscreen. We're thinking of two so totally different things. Like, no, it's not. That's not the name of it. No. But it was cool what I saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now I need to see you guys. Is that the one with like the face? The yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I don't know what that's called. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like a theremin almost, and you slide. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we're we're talking it. about the yeah, 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 yeah the little guy. <laughs> it looks like a quarter note, and then yeah, like, yeah. like wow. yeah. I think they've made like Kirby versions of it now, and everything too. Like they've they've gone all out with these, but that's There's that's so cool. Yeah. Like, no, 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 he's gonna incorporate as many instruments as possible. No, those things suck. Those things suck. They're, 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 yeah, you heard it, guys. Those thing. things suck. Don't yeah, get yeah, one. Yeah. Don't it's incorporate a, it. Okay, it's a toy. It's a toy. <laughs> it's made for children. But people like. <laughs> can play it, but it takes a lot of skill because it's a, it, it's a cheap piece of technology. Who makes those dumb sponsors? I feel like you're just trying to tell everybody it sucks so nobody tries it first. It. Like, really exactly, like you guys got dibs on it. No one can have a whole orchestra with those. <laughs> So, uh, you guys, as a band, what's your biggest goal? And I mean, each of you can have a different goal in mind. We'll start from Alex back this way to give you time to think. Yeah, that's a hard question. I mean, not uh, not a good. I I don't see like in the near future like rock being like making a or like classical style like rock becoming like like a mainstream necessarily thing like you know as big as how hip-hop and pop is like today but i do imagine that they're like you know i know there's like king gizzard or like um like they listen to all them witches and, and whatnot and they're they're great bands i think to be kind of on like a similar level with that at some point would be like our like kind of end goal as far not, not i mean always strive to be better than even the best that you think you can be but like you know that that's where i imagine probably like the sweet spot is okay yeah similar to that very much so like just to be able to make music that we deem like worthy just putting it out there um spread it to like you know hearts and minds because like we love it so much it's like that's why we're here doing it i hope that's why any musician does it you know so it's like, we, if we can share that experience and, uh, yeah, just be part of the, um, the wave, <laughs> the musical wave. Yeah, yeah, be part of the, um, yeah, above my bed I have this, uh, this piece of art, uh, and it's like a hand with a torch. And that's kind of like the way I see what I want to do is kind of like take the, kind of, it's, it's similar to the, the process behind our name with like the weight of history behind us in a way. 
um, where I kind of want to take like all the people and all the musicians and all the art that inspired me, filter it through my own consciousness and farther the, uh, the great story, if you will, and kind of be a part of that. And um, yeah, just music is dope. It makes people happy, um, gets people through tough times and stuff. I think um, it's, a, it's a good venture to be a part of. And I wish to pay respect to the people that inspired me and hopefully inspire other people one day to do the same. Yeah, they, they kind of spoke most of what was on my heart. And I, I guess the last thing I'll kind of say too is just, it'd be nice to get to a point where um, I can officially get everything that's in my head out in a, in a good systematic fashion mm -hmm. and um, eat, eat off of my art, um, go forward to, to live comfortably uh, making art. Uh, okay. It has done so much for me and um, to be able to help myself more and others would just be phenomenal. And even if all that like doesn't come necessarily to that end goal, it's, a, it's always been, it, it will always be a good time playing music yeah. with these guys. And, sure. yeah. and the journey making it. Phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Too many members already. <laughs> and that's, the, I mean, I love that you guys are having fun with it because that's really what it's about. Um, it's funny seeing different band dynamics because sometimes you see some people that are like so straight business. Like we are going to make it to a big stage and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because everybody has, you know, what fulfills them because success is subjective. Like, you know, whatever success is to you. Uh, you guys all had really beautiful answers. And I hope you guys can keep doing what you love and survive off of doing what you love. Um, this is the point in the interview where we usually have a Reddit post, but um, I forgot my emotional support phone and I'm not going to get up to get it. So I want to discuss the topic at hand. Uh, Are birds real or not? <laughs> we have a hat here that says birds aren't real. Nothing um, is real. Nothing is real. There you go. Good answer. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, is that disputable? Your eyes and your senses are the only way in which you experience the universe. There is no other objective way of determining what is or isn't. True. And since sense data is fundamentally unverifiable, we could never actually know if anything's real. Okay. My senses, when I go outside, I see little things flying in the sky. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure all of you do too if you look up. So what do we have to say about those little crappers in the sky? <laughs> could just be ones and, <laughs> <laughs> and they make good doodles. If you're bored, just kind of look up and doodle them down. Mm -hmm. Make a cool drawing. Hmm. Is that the birds call? Yeah, the birds. <laughs> 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 like yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to switch subjects yeah, actually. Yeah, we just got word from the <laughs> yeah. word from the bird. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? That, that's probably not you either. <laughs> the question at hand, are they government drones or not, guys? Come on. Oh, which government? I mean, uh, which government? Ooh. Because they fly, you know. I feel. <laughs> yeah, Yemen. Yemen. Yemen big <laughs> you know, I feel like the U.S. is just one of those governments that would invest all that money in there. So oh, we're gonna what? say that would, yes. I, I wouldn't doubt it. Right. I, I feel like birds are pretty inconspicuous. You like, know, isn't the U.S. just us though? Yeah. There was this CIA project back in the 70s where they literally opened up a cat and put a microphone inside of the cat and then sent it into the room with a, a, like a Russian, like uh, in, a, in a Russian embassy or something like that so that they could spy on it. It actually didn't work. The cat died, but the CIA has sure. tried this stuff before and it's it's easily available on the internet. So, you know, it's possible. It's very possible. Yeah. Especially now in that we're in the drone age where you can buy a drone at at Target for 20 Yeah, so we, I think we kind of like birds at the end of the day. And yes, they are US government. Yeah. I like the ones that <laughs> Thank died you. like 212. <laughs> you know those ones? Peregrine falcons, is that what they're called? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Were the ones in the ocean that, like, fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you think? I'm just really upset about this cat dying over the uh, microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know about that. I'm, I'm so, so, I'm so heartbroken. It happened in the Cold War, okay? If it makes it As opposed to the Cold War. No more and more. I'm lucky. Come on. My friend, that was a dick dogs. move in bird culture. 
<laughs> this is your shameless plug moment. You can go ahead and tell that camera there anything you guys want the people to know. Hmm. Um, yeah. Want you to know that you you are loved. Aww. You are loved. Shout out your band. <laughs> we are Mount Sinai. We are uh, we got a bunch of shows upcoming. Check our socials at Mount Sinai Music. Um, we've got something special in the process, and we've been working with uh, some other local guys. Uh, shout out to Scott Crane of Monaco Slim. Um, we're gonna make something really cool happen soon, and uh, we'll, yeah, just follow us yeah, and stay tuned. New stuff. Yeah. Scott's an awesome dude. I love Voodoo Monk. You guys shouted him out a million times. <laughs> <laughs> On this side, you guys, please subscribe to the Senior Citizen Podcast. Keep us going. Support your local music team, and make sure to follow Mount tonight. And we will catch you next week on our next episode. Bye bye. Thank you.